please welcome Paul Sellers. Moltissime grazie, Aaron. Siamo uh, molto contenti al British Council di essere di partecipare qui, grazie mille al British uh, Chamber of Commerce e a tutti i sponsor e partners, uh, è proprio un, un onore per noi di partecipare. As Aaron said, uh, we will look a little bit at um, language and education in my presentation today. Um, if we can have the first slide. <coughs> Obviously, I'm not sure if you can all see the, the print there, but for a fair selection, everybody has to take the same exam. Please climb that tree. Um, as you all know, the area of assessment of comparing people uh, for jobs and so forth is fraught with um, uh, sort of dangers and difficulty, but also opportunity from the perspective of EDI, equality, diversity, and inclusion. So just to set the scene a little bit in terms of the English language globally, <coughs> I'm sure none of this is particular news to you, but um, again, uh, I do apologize for the, the size there, but um, you can see the English bubble is the third one along from the left, and this is uh, of the top 10 most widely spoken language by first language speakers, so native language speakers, as it were. And English is indeed third to um, Spanish and Mandarin Chinese. And in terms of the total global population, which I believe is well over 7 billion now, uh, it actually represents quite a small chunk of that. And uh, indeed, it's good to see that there must be many, many languages in existence, if that's just the top 10 as well. So if I can have the next slide. <coughs> I think the, the most interesting statistic uh, for today's discussion is the number of people who speak English, perhaps as a second language, as well as another language. And that figure is approaching, by you know, our, our calculations, 2 billion, which I guess is, is approaching a third of the world's population. We've um, made a publication, this is a few years ago now, The English Effect, which went into studying uh, these phenomena. And I just include a quote from a, a French uh, colleague at the time there, just to illustrate it. Uh, do we have any French colleagues in the audience? Okay, so we can, I can relax, good, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, but of course the French, you know, wonderfully, are fiercely protective of their wonderful language, uh, as they should be. But of course, um, the spread of English is inexorable, and I think this shows that uh, the chairman of the Conference of French University Presidents accepting the fact that half of the people working are working in English in any particular research or educational environment. Um, so it's a phenomenon that really cannot be ignored. Um, so a lot of people there, and um, we'll just have a look at the spread across the globe of English. So this is from a, um, a piece of research done by the Daily Telegraph, the British uh, daily newspaper, looking at um, the top countries, 45 of them, where at least half of the population speak English. And obviously the, the darker the colour, the, the higher the incidence of English. Obviously you'd expect um, North America, Canada, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, I guess, to be dark red, interestingly, also up there in the Scandinavian countries and um, perhaps around Germany there. So it, it, English is, and I don't have to tell you that, the, the, the new lingua franca. It's um, spread inexorably uh, around the globe. Uh, it's become the language of choice for business, for politics, for education. And um, as such, it is a gateway to opportunity. It is the means of accessing the global economy. For many people, it's a means of accessing work, jobs, um, relations, intercultural relations, etc. So it's extremely important, and I think we all uh, celebrate um, the existence of a language that allows us all to meet in a common area of understanding to develop uh, our relationships, whether they be business, personal, or cultural or educational. I guess the flip side to that is that there are an awful lot of people who don't speak English. 
and you know you can see the whiter shades of the globe there. And this, I think, is is one of our focuses, certainly for the British Council. Um, there might be many reasons <coughs> why somebody doesn't speak English or doesn't have access to quality English language teaching. It might be public policy, it might be economic means, both in terms of the public sector education or the ability to pay for it privately. But nevertheless, the flip side of this is that people who don't have access to English for one reason or another are arguably seriously disadvantaged in the modern world because they don't have these uh, points of access to the global economy, to jobs, and equality of opportunity. So this is where the British Council would aim to step in, particularly uh, in developed countries like Italy and, and in Europe, we're able to hone our uh, expertise in English language, um, with then which to take it out to our network around the world, and we're, we're very proud to be present in over 110 countries uh, in the world, many of them some of the poorer countries, um, to um, make sure that English is accessible as far and wide as possible. I guess in some ways, I, and I haven't done the research, but this map might look s fairly similar if you were to say, uh, compare it with the incidence of the internet, internet access. Um, obviously, the developed world has more internet, internet access. And there is a phenomenon, of course, whereby if you have access, you have more opportunity. If you don't have access, you don't have that opportunity. And the gap can only get wider. It's never going to converge without an active intervention. And again, this is where we need to um, be conscious and to act as much as we can. The other area, however, is that I think we'd all agree that the planet would be a poorer place if we all only spoke English. And indeed, linguistic diversity is arguably just as important to the development of the planet and the human race as our biodiversity in the natural world, which of course we are killing off rapidly and is disappearing. So we need to try and take those retrospective steps as far as language is concerned that we're taking in the environmental agenda around the world. And um, again, there's, there's an interesting phenomenon because it's actually much more advantageous to speak two languages, English plus one language, than just English. Not, because, not simply because of the diversity, but because for the individual, languages, as I'm sure you all know, do wonderful things to the brain. They create those connections and those synapses start working, which activate creativity, lateral thinking. And also, it gives you a window into another culture, another discourse, um, art, poetry, areas which you can only really access properly through the original language, be it Italian, Spanish, Chinese, Turkish, Senegalese, uh, whichever language you, you're talking about. So it, it's very, very important to have um, multilingualism. And paradoxically, the native speakers who we saw in the um, original slide, those 350 of us, if we don't speak another language, we become marginalized because we don't have that extra window on another culture or those opportunities. And indeed, um, the native speaker who doesn't speak another language risks becoming extinct economically in the future. Io sono molto fortunato perché per la mia carriera internazionale ho l'opportunità di conoscere e di imparare delle lingue straniere, però questa opportunità non è aperta a tutti i miei compatrioti. Anzi, la richiesta, il studio delle lingue straniere in Gran Bretagna è in declino, che è molto triste e molto pericoloso, which is why the British Council not only promotes the teaching and learning of English, but it also promotes the teaching and learning of foreign languages in the UK, an uphill struggle, and linguistic diversity around the world. And I think this is where, on many fronts, our agendas 
with your agendas in the business world coincide. Because when we raise our heads above the parapet and preach these things, as uh, Daniel said at the beginning, there comes a responsibility. Because as soon as you project yourself into, onto the world stage or into society, you inevitably inject bias. As soon as we open our mouths, we know this very much as teachers in the British Council, as soon as you stand in front of a class, you project bias. And you have to be very careful. Uh, you project bias by your sexuality, your, the way you, your clothes, the accent you speak, the uh, images you offer, uh, the way you interact with people, the way you talk about other people. And this, again, I think it equates with business, can be leveraged as an opportunity to promote positive bias. So in our teaching materials, for example, we would make sure that we represent all the groups, minority groups, equally and positively. And we would go out of our way to make sure that this is happening. We would make sure that our curriculum is compliant with our values and uh, with our diversity criteria. And we take the opportunity, unashamedly, to promote the liberal, progressive, democratic values of tolerance, appreciation of diversity, celebration of equality and of different cultures within that. Because I think that if we are able to live our values through our business and to our customers, and I know you're on the same page with me here, then we are fulfilling our mission. That's it. There is nothing else. We, the British Council, a cultural relations organization, is here to promote cultural relations and an understanding and a friendly um, interaction between cultures of all um, the world. I was very struck by the Inglesi Italianati, <laughs> of which I would be very proud to be one. But my fear is that we are losing that beautiful side. And um, it's something that we, as the British Council, would not want to preach to other people. We want to put our own house in order at the same time as helping other people. So if I could have the next slide. Um, there's quite a lot there, but it's a very simple message. And I'd, you might want to reflect on, on your own businesses and agendas. We work in all of those areas on the left-hand side, the arts, education, society, English, obviously. And then, of course, we have our, our support services, our business infrastructure. And we profess to promote all the areas of diversity in the wheel on the right-hand side. Sexual identity, religion or belief, gender, ethnicity, disability, age, important one. Uh, the British Council adds um, a seventh to the sort of traditional sixth, which is work-life balance, which is a perennial challenge. And within our business, moral, and legal framework, we have to keep reminding ourselves, and when we plan, when we strategize, is this project projecting our equality and diversity agenda? Is EDI, equality and diversity inclusion, central to the work? If it's an English class, if it's an arts project, is it central? Because if it's not, it doesn't pass muster and it needs to be recast. If we get it right, by delivering our program, by mainstreaming EDI into what we do, and in effect mainstreaming what we do into EDI, we've fulfilled our mission. And for businesses, I'm not the expert, but I would suggest it's the same. Because businesses of the future will survive if they respond to the consumers, and increasingly consumers demand respect for diversity, respect for the environment. And it's good business. 
So that's where the British Council is. We would want to promote English, promote access to people who don't have the access to it, but at the same time celebrate linguistic diversity and make sure that it's celebrated in the workplace and every point. Because whilst a second language such as English is indeed a useful lingua franca, it's not a language or a means of communication that will reach the core of a dialogue with another person. It is not the end of the matter. And if we look at a quote that I've um, stolen from the Honorable Nelson Mandela, if you talk to a man, now this was in a time when you, know, you, you use words like man, but if you talk to someone in a language they understand, it goes to their head. If you talk to them in their own language, it goes to their heart. So we need a balance and I would encourage you to join us in celebrating linguistic, linguistic diversity and of employing policies and practices in your own workplace that reflect us as well. Thank you very much indeed.